والجماعة جماعة الحق والهدى والسنة هم السلفيون. For those who are listening online at the back, the question was that we have uh, we have a situation, shall I say, or there's a sort of manhaj methodology that is being widespread at the moment now. You have academic qualifications, then you are what far superior than the ones that don't have it. Like, like referring to you know academic qualifications that are perhaps taken from an Islamic university. Okay, like, um, I myself can elaborate upon that. Uh, why? Because I'm a graduate. I'm a gra I'm a graduate from the Islamic university from the Fadl of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I sit here today very humbly saying, by Allah, I have brothers that I have benefited from, and they are brothers that are here today, that lecture from our elders. I am a living witness of that. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive me of my shortcomings and may Allah increase me in knowledge. But yes, we're not gonna downplay if you graduated. If you graduate from an Islamic university, especially Medina, especially Mecca, then that is an achievement within itself because you would have to learn the Arabic language. Then you'd have to go into the faculty. You'd have to memorize. You'd have to write. You'd have to write buhuf. You'd have to do all of that. There's no denying that, that there is benefit in that. And then the one that has done that, then Alhamdulillah, pat on the back. However, is that the do all now? Is that now that makes you from the greatest scholars that come on the face of the earth? They didn't have these qualifications. They didn't have that. From the greatest of the scholars that we have, from old and even from recent. Sheikh Mukbir Rahimullah Ta'ala, I heard our brother, our Sheikh uh, Hassan al Somali, say many times that Sheikh Mukbir said that he, that shahada that he had from the university is just somebody didn't know where it is. He's never used it. So, Another example I'll give you. Abu Awais rahimullah ta'ala from America. One of the greatest da'is to come rahimullah ta'ala that spread da'wah to Salafiyah after the fadl of Allah in America. Had a huge door. The contribution that he had towards spreading da'wah to Salafiyah in America was second to none. To this day we still benefit from him. An electrifying speaker. A man that Allah Azza wa Jal blessed, that when he spoke, people listened. It had an effect on your heart. A man that was on Salafiyya did not compromise. And many of the du'a that we have in America today are from his works and from, they benefited from him. He didn't graduate. Abu Talha, rahimullah ta'ala, our shaykh. After Allah Azza wa Jal, we all bear witness that he is one of the the greatest Tullah that has come from the UK. And likewise what he put forth, the foundations that he laid. He is the Sheikh of many of us. He is my Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Hakim Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Khadija Sheikh. Many. He didn't graduate. So are we going to say, we're not going to sit with him? The work that he did, the benefit that we had from him, now, would it be right to say, based upon these principles now, that he didn't have a certificate so we can't sit with him? We don't sit with uh, Abu Awais, rahimahullah ta'ala, and even many of some of the scholars have, have, have got the shahadat. I fear, I fear that this statement that we only take from those with academic qualifications, there's something behind it. There's something more behind it. I may I be wrong, but we give, we give due and respect to ilm. We give, if Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed an individual with ilm of Quran and Sunnah, if that is like we mentioned in the dars, we don't, we, we're not envious of that. And if that individual possesses Quran and Sunnah, ala fahm salaf al salih and is heavily grounded in that knowledge, and the scholars speak khair of him, then we take from him, regardless if he has a graduate certificate, master's or PhD. 
بل عزيد على ذلك you want to work with the PhD uh, argument majority of the PhD students from Medina that we witnessed majority of the master students are khaban ta'ban yasir qadi from the head of them and many others that went down that road where are they today what's the point of that shahada if you're not calling to that which is haq what's the point of that shahada if you're not sincere what's the point of that shahada and likewise even with the ulama walillahi alhamd walillahi alhamd like i say allah has blessed us to sit with many of the great scholars that came sometimes i say to myself that maybe Everyone has their door. Maybe my role was that I sat with many of the great scholars to learn the akhlaq only. So at least I could come back and at least teach the people, at least regarding that, if I'm void of any other knowledge. At least I can teach the people to say, Allahu A'lam, I don't know. So Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, don't be phased out by this new trend of this new dawah that's being pushed that if you are academically qualified, then you are automatically qualified to teach and you are automatically the one that the people should turn their heads to. And bell, be aware of those individuals that utilize that speech to belittle those who have preceded them in Dawa for over two decades. Because this is what we're finding now as well. Because the Natija may stand, it may be Kalam al haq but you read to be here Ba'atil. It could come, and Allah knows best, that certain statements that I said that may have truth in it. But what is your murad? What is your intent? What is being circulated? And if I'm understanding, what did you say? You're saying that there's a dawah to say that we shouldn't sit with who? So basically, Maktab Salafiyah then basically. So basically, let's, so don't sit with Abu Khadija or don't sit with Abu Riyad and don't sit with Abu Hakim. Like I said, all three of these brothers are full Allah. وَمَا أُزَكِي عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدَ I learn from them. I learn from them. When I'm stuck, I go back to them. And none of them are graduate. I'm a graduate. But the father which they've done, Ikhwa, for me, the real graduation is Somebody who has been on Dawah for over 25 years that the Mashaykh know, that the Mashaykh advise with, and for 25 years, every single fitna that came, they stood firm with the Fadl of Allah. They clarified, they went back to the scholars, and then they came and they stood firm while they were getting warabad from all angles. But they did not go left or right. They remained upon Dawah to Salafiyah and the Qawaid and they did not compromise. And when people were in confusion, they stood firm. And when there was in confusion, they clarified and they helped people. And with the Fadl of Allah, they're still here upon the Haq. For me, that is the biggest graduation certificate that you can have. You come and tell me after 30 years, are you still on this team defending? So, Ikhwan, our, method, our methodology is the methodology of the Salaf. Quran and Sunnah ala aqwal al Salaf. If someone's on that and that way, and someone is calling to that, and Allah has blessed them with the ilm, even though they may not have a graduation paper. And what is a graduation paper? Everyone has different circumstances. Abu Hakim can very, very, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, very easily would have walked through any studies. Do you know one of, the, one of the reasons why he didn't go back? Because his father was on his deathbed, Rahimullah. And then he came back. And his father died in his, in his hands. And he died a Muslim and took a shahada before he went back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And because of that, they did not issue a visa for him. And this is from the reason that he could not go back. Not because he wasn't capable of it, just for clarification, just to let you know. So my brothers, those, remember we said in the beginning of our lecture that there are individuals that will come and there will be obstacles and they will try to take you away from the correct path 
And one of the ways they do that is stopping you from the way to the scholars. We take what the scholars say, what the Sheikh Rabi say, regarding England, shall we say, and in the West. What the Sheikh Rabi say, who to take from? Is it someone from which Shahadat? Uh, who? Tell me. Who does, if we go and see Sheikh Rabi, what's the first thing does he say? How is Maktaba Salafiyah? How is Abu Hakim? How is Abu Khadija? When people come with any ishkalat, he says, what does Abu Khadija and Abu Hakim say? Are you with them? When you go to regarding America, he talks about Hassan Somali. He talks about Malik Abu Hassan. These are the names that we hear from Sheikh Rabi, from Sheikh Ubaid. Sheikh Ubaid refers to these as Mashaykh. That's another mushkil that people seem to have as well. That why are you calling them Sheikhs? And even me myself, I don't think that I am mustahib to have any title of Sheikh. I say it humbly, not because I want to cause any mushkala for anyone else, because I believe that you have to have a certain criteria of certain ilm to be called that. However, I gladly call my brothers Mashaykh. You know why? Because the scholars call them Mashaykh. The scholars call them Mashaykh. Sheikh Abu Hakim, how many times have I heard it from Sheikh Obey? Sheikh Abu Khadij, Sheikh Hassan. How many scholars have said that? But you see, there's a trend. What is it really? Is it, like I said, 30 years of giving dawah, 30 years of being firm, yes, you're a sheikh for me. If your beard has become grey, and you are now over 50, 55, 56, and you have been calling to dawah to Salafiyah, and you have been, alhamdulillah, authored and clarified, then yes, you are a sheikh. Without a question of a doubt. Don't let anyone come and tell you otherwise. And that doesn't mean that, that we are now saying that they are sheikh on the caliber of Sheikh al fawzan No one has that warped understanding. We are not saying that no, if you call Sheikh Abu Hakim, he is now on the level of Sheikh Obaid and Sheikh Rabi, or Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari. No one is saying that. And the perfect proof of that is, when we was in Medina, we called many Mashaykh, Mashaykh. But we, were, we knew the farq. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari is not on the league of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari is not on the league and on the level of Sheikh Al Fawzan. But we call him Sheikh. We call him Sheikh. And we know the darajat and we know the levels. And this is what a good teacher does. When he explains to his students, he explains who are the kibar and who are the other mashaykh that are smaller and lesser in ilm and the tulab al ilm. But I fear these type of arguments, what is it really about? Why, why are these things being mentioned? Like we said earlier, we should love, we should love Wallahi that your brother is defending this deen, is spreading this deen. We should love that fact that Dawah Salafiyah is spreading. The Masajid of Salafiyah after the Fadl of Allah, after the permission of Allah, وَمَا أُزَكِي أَوَ اللَّهِ أَحَدَ Not by our own permission, but by Allah's leave. In Birmingham, the Dawah started in a house. And today, Alhamdulillah, we have Masajid all across the UK. We have Marakis of Salafiyya across the UK. We have brothers that are Huffad al Quran. We have brothers and sisters that, Alhamdulillah, we have Shabab that are memorizing the books of the Salaf. Our Dawah is spreading. Our children, Alhamdulillah, are marrying upon Salafiyya. We're having grandchildren now. All upon Salafiyya. That is a huge blessing. And with, that is with the leave of Allah. Let's not forget. We don't attribute that khair to ourselves. What we say is from Allah. But however, our brothers in Maktab Salafiyya were instrumental in many of what we have learned and our children. So let's be thankful and be happy and aid. And let's be one hand. Let's be a rank that are united. Let's all be united. Let the du'at be united. The students of knowledge be united. Let our communities be united. Because that is what our da'wah calls to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now sorry ikhwan, I went on a bit of a rant, but it had to be clarified. But I hope it's clear now. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa sallallahu barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.